And that's why we don't do special intros. But what we have here, I saved you the trouble of an unboxing. The headers, the long awaited, long delayed headers have finally showed up. Once again, these are pace setters, long tubes. I'll have them linked down below if you're interested in picking them up. Nope, these are not ceramic coated. There's nothing special to them. They're just painted black. If you were to fire these up on a test stand or in your truck or whatever you're putting them on, they're going to burn the paint off really quick. That was fine to me because at the time I ordered these, the ceramic coated were going to be about another four to six weeks out. And I did not want to deal with that. So, this is what arrived. Uh, reasonably priced. I think they actually went down, believe it or not, yes, down $15 from when I placed the order. They're $349. Uh, currently, they're listed for $334. So, for whatever reason, these, these became more affordable. But uh, ceramic coated version, obviously, you know, it's going to be a little bit better, a little bit more efficient, if you will. But uh, these are here, and we do have plans for them. I'll yeah, I don't think I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do yet because I'm not 100% sure. But I pulled them out of the box and I thought, man, you know, these actually don't look that bad. There's just one little ding on the box. The flange was coming through. Flange is nice and thick. Primaries look good. They're kind of squared off. Uh, if you see here, I'll try to keep the camera strap out of here. But, you know, it's welded inside the flange. A reason for that, if you're sitting there and you're like, oh, they didn't even smooth it out, the flow. Yes, that's true. You know, that's not ideal for flow. That's not like the ultimate goal here. We're not doing like super crazy, you know, high RPM horsepower build or anything. That said, I'm okay with it because if you've ever put headers on a small block Mopar, this doesn't matter if it's an old school LA or Magnum, it's a royal pain in the butt to access the fastener. So if you had these tubes welded on the outside, nightmare situation. That little bead, you know, whatever it winds up taking up an eighth to a quarter of an inch maybe, <laughs> it will ruin your day. Case in point, if we look at that flange, imagine with the weld being on the exterior of that. If you were trying to run like a flat washer or a flanged bolt or anything fancy, not really going to happen. It's just not a good setup. Now, uh, that said, all in all, especially for the price point, I was pretty happy with these. I was like, man, you know, this is a nice little setup. We got the uh, O2 sensor, or O2 bung, I should say, I already welded up. <laughs> and uh, then uh, what I do anytime I get something like this in, I check it. You know, I go over it thoroughly. Obviously, we inspect the welds, we check for burrs. There's not really any burrs to speak of. You know, everything is a nice machine surface where it should be. Uh, everything seems to have been hit before they threw the paint on it. And uh, they do that tag right there will tell you that that is not a high temp coating, you know, in case you were unaware. Because uh, they do look decent, you know, if you're coming right out of the box. But then, as I grabbed the other side and pulled it out and did my inspection, catastrophe struck. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if I can swing it with it here on the box or not. And I think it's this side. Let me, uh... I'll try. Yeah, it's this one. So I have no clue what you're looking at. I'm a, I'm a one-handed man right now. But what I'll try to do is... So obviously you got your inboard, your outboard, and then your you know two center exits, right? Well, if you come in and you look right there, you're like, yeah, you know, there's that little well. Sure, it could be cleaned up and it would flow a little bit better. And then what about this one? Yeah, same thing. If you think you see the cardboard box, daylight, or in that case, the blue of the toolbox, it's because you do. <laughs> and, uh, this is a situation, this wasn't like a mist weld per se, because there is a bead there. It's just, I guess, the one of two things I could think of. Number one, uh, your primary tube was cut a little short for some reason. Uh, or number two, it just wasn't like in the jig properly. And that is, in fact, a gaping hole. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of people probably would have just like thrown these on, especially if you're like me. I'm ready to just get the truck going, move on to other things, have it to drive and haul and pick things up with, right? You really take having a truck for granted until you don't have one. But that would be one nasty exhaust leak, right? <laughs> like I'm talking really bad. And the sad thing is, you know, in like a dark engine bay, especially on a black truck, uh, nothing really, you know, the block is actually black as well in this case. You're just not going to see that in a lot of circumstances. And so I'm not sure you can see it as well there. I think you can as I kind of pan back and forth. It needs to be welded. Uh, 
the situation is, um, I've got something I can't tell you because I haven't released that video yet. Um, but I've never used it and I'm afraid I would blow this out. I'm fully capable of welding, but this is something, if the tube was just there and they like didn't weld it, I could totally handle that myself. I'd feel fine with it. That's missing some material. And when we do that, <laughs> there's a good chance we blow something out. I've never welded something this thin in tubing. The flange is no issues. If the flange was cracked, I can handle that. Surface it weld at zero issues. The tubing I could possibly do, but I'm afraid I would blow it out. Uh, immediately after opening these, I went ahead the uh, that night. I emailed Summit. I was lucky they responded to me super quick. They said, hey, we're sorry about that. You know, we can do two things. We can send you out a new one immediately, or you can see if you can get it fixed locally if you can, and it's a reasonable price. We'll reimburse you. I have full faith they will hopefully do that. I've had good luck with some in the past on everything and uh, no reason to really doubt them here. However, what I do doubt, if I were to send these away, number one, what I'm trying to do, I'm not gonna tell you how I'm gonna coat these, but they're gonna get coated, obviously. I'm thinking I'm gonna have the powder coater guy at work next week and I was planning to ship it off with them. And if I miss that cycle, these were coming out of Georgia's where these surface was not like they're in Dallas and they'll be here like next day or something. I could potentially miss that cycle. It's typically two to four weeks, kind of depends what we have, what the schedule's like with the powder coaters on when they're in and out of work for us. I was just going to send these down there with them. Um, I might expedite it. I might run down and pick these up as soon as they're done type of a deal, but uh, it's, you know, 100, 100 miles away, not a huge task or anything I can run them down if I need to but it'd be nice to just send them with them when they're there right if I ship these away and they send me new ones issue number one I might not have them for that cycle issue number two and the more important thing I have no guarantee if we come out and we pick up another set of headers if what if they're perfect that would be great best case scenario but what if they're not what if I have the exact same issue what if I have the issue not only on the passenger side, but also the driver side? What if there's three primary tubes with that issue? Uh, I don't know, right? Obviously, quality control didn't catch this one. Uh, it was missed. Uh, Summit, you know, they're not really liable to like go through and open up everything you buy and hand check and inspect it ahead of time, right? So it's sort of on pace setter. I'm not super mad at pace setter. Because uh, like I said, for the money and the fact that this is all that's left, like in terms of long tube headers for a second gen Ram Magnum stuff, this is it. Dakota Durango people, maybe you can find like some uh, spin tech pieces here and there. But Edelbrock's gone, Mopar Performance is gone. Uh, you basically have like eBay shorties, Gibson, uh, JBA, and if you want long tubes, you have pace setter. <laughs> so I'm very thankful they are here. Um, but that is a problem. The other issue is, like I said, I'm afraid if I were to try it, I would blow it out. I've talked with, you know, like, uh, all my friends in fabrication and stuff. They're mainly MIG welders. There's a few that TIG here and there. They're kind of leery of it. I'm, you got to think I'm like industrial backed here, not like light duty. So, you know, 10 gauge and thicker pipe, you know, is what these people are accustomed to. I don't want to put someone in that position where I like bring it to them and I'm going to throw them 20 bucks and, you know, they weld it up for me and then they blow it out and feel terrible. And I don't know what Summit would do in that case. So I've talked to somebody uh, locally. Uh, they have a good reputation. They were recommended as well. They said they would take it on. So I think I'm going to let them do it. <laughs> and then on the flip side, where we started the video right here, this is a V-band. And uh, what this is going to be, it's going to be a sweet little uh, way for me to quick, you know, disconnect if we need to pull, you know, transfer case, transmission, whatever we want to do. This is super simple, super clean setup. If you're not familiar with V-bands, this is kind of just a modern clamp, <laughs> and essentially, uh, this is a machined lip. Everything is machined. It's nice. That's why you got that finish on there. It's not for show. Sure. That's just machined. So this welds on. This welds on. They made up. The clamp keeps them in place. Super easy. If you want to take this off in two years, no problem. Uh, you're not going to have to sit there and beat it off with an air hammer or something, which is cool. The other thing uh, that brings us here. They will slip fit just fine. You don't get much of a lip at all if you're unfamiliar. I think you can kind of see it. Like if it looks like there's just a hairline or two there, that's because there is. That's all that you get with the V-band. So it would in theory like literally nest just like that. 
Uh, that is something I would like to try to weld, but if I'm taking these somewhere and there's somebody that's proficient with it and it's going to save me time and get the truck going, we're just going to call it good and let them handle it. <laughs> Similarly, while this fits beautifully, right, and that's a 3-inch collector, 3-inch V-band, everything's great. Pace setter, the Y-pipe, I've not opened that thing. I've got the crossover boxed up over by the uh, roll cart. We're going to open that up right now. And what I'm afraid of, I don't know exactly how they do it, because obviously we haven't opened it, but this is a slip fit. Okay, this is not like a ball joint and there's nothing fancy. It's just one of the pipes that slides over. If they did it good, it would be the exhaust pipe or your crossover would slide over the collector. If this fits the three inch diameter that we've got on the V-band, my fear is that that three inch pipe on the flip side has been bushed out or expanded just a little bit to slide over. I don't know how it's going to work with this. So I'm going to check that out because again, thinking efficient wise, if I'm taking this up, he's going to fix the primary, going to weld the V-bands on for me. I'm also going to make sure that fits because I don't want to weld V-bands if the backside doesn't do anything for me, right? That would be pointless. <laughs> so uh, we're going to run over there, open that up. We'll check it out, maybe do a quick little mock-up. Ideally, this would be mocked up in the truck. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. It's Memorial Day weekend right now. Uh, I think the guy's in town. I think he's going to be able to get it out maybe like this coming week, which would be great. Uh, it's very simple stuff, but I mean, he's probably busy, you know, as a day job does this type of stuff on the side kind of like me so uh, we shall see but let's go ahead and check out that crossover pipe all right so hopefully this stays in focus but this is just a little for the tool people <laughs> uh, at work i've been using a little bit uh striking cap driver right i don't know why it never occurred to me to try an all but that's what i've been doing recently here at the house and it works really well obviously you've got a sharp point and uh, you're able to just get up and under the staples super easy uh this one i'm not even sure if it's in the frame for you but there's about five staples across here uh, we will come back to this one and if you note just how easy that works under the staple if you pull it to the side you're able to kind of just roll it out like that so once again these are like Really reasonably priced since it's an all and also gives you a chance to try the tri lube from Vit. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up. If you're like, hey, why didn't you open that already? Hasn't it sat there a few months? Not too terribly long. It's just a deal I was bummed out about the headers. Like, this is kind of worthless without the headers, right? So hopefully everything's good. I think it's still in the window. I can tell Summit. But I'm gonna open it up. We'll check it out. We'll mock up the V band, see what we've got. All right, so just so I don't leave you in the dust or anything here, this is how she came packed. Lots and lots of packing. It looks to be done really well. Looks like the exhaust is going to be bagged as well. Obviously, we're going to have several different runs of pipe here. This will sort of be headed off towards the cat. So what I will do to save you time is we'll just go ahead, now that you know that they packed it well, we will get everything out, take a look at it, and then, like I said, test out the V-bands. All right, so this is probably slightly not correct, but pretty close, I would assume. So kind of got your Y, that would head off to your uh, factory cat. You got the crossover, that's going to be a slip joint. I think you can pick it out pretty clear. You got the run over here that'll be on the driver's side. I think it's kind of a straight shot from the passenger side, so I believe that would be correct. Obviously, it might have to spin around. I'm not quite sure where the kicks and the dog legs should be or anything, but this gives you the rough idea of what we're working with. So points of interest are here and here right so we've got the passenger collector and we've got the driver's side collector from the headers and it does look like this three inch pipe here is expanded out so we'll have to see what that's going to do to the v-band obviously if we cut it we're we're taking off a decent length there uh, really this should be mocked up but also for time constraints it probably shouldn't so uh, I guess this could be dealt with after the fact you just get the headers mounted up and then kind of do all this freehand right also of note for the uh, tune uh, that we'll be doing with the HP tuners and everything we're gonna need to go ahead and get an O2 sensor uh, welded up there so I uh, can't remember I think uh, flying Ryan he had a recommendation either the crossover who knows I'll figure it out but uh, this is kind of the rough mock-up, so I'm going to grab a V-band and we'll sort of see what we're left with. All right, so our next issue, um, <laughs> where to begin? So this is going to be the driver's side, and that would be the passenger side run of pipe 
for the Y, right? Because it's pretty much a straight shot. If you're thinking, hey, why is that on the driver's side header? Test fitting. And what I'm doing is twofold. Number one, I'm kind of trying to mock up and see, like, if I can just come in and lop off, you know, the expanded joint and pretty much be squared up for the V bands. Number two, and more importantly, this sucker is out of round. So this is the passenger side. This is the one that we've got our issue with where it wasn't welded properly. Uh, tube fitment is off. This is just out of round a little bit. So case in point, uh, this right here that I should be able to caress off. This is expanded, right? You can clearly see there that it's been bushed out and it's just, it's almost like a flush fit, right? So I don't know if that happened in freight. I don't know. Uh, again, this side, the driver's side is mint perfect. You can see it's going on and off just fine. There's no burrs that is preventing it. It's just literally uh, kind of too wide. <laughs> so that is not good. And I'm going to try to address that issue. But the other thing I'm trying to do again is just sort of mock up, get the links figured out. It's not too big of a deal having the V-bands here, but then everything else should be fluid. Um, again, keep in mind when that V-band is welded up, you can spin the pipe, so if that kick should be on the opposite side for whatever reason, you simply rotate it around. Uh, since I have this dismantled, you can kind of get a better feel for it. Right here, you can see this lip where my index finger's at. That's all that kind of really flush mounts, right? So this would kind of slide over and it just seats that shallow. Uh, that's where you would come in, you would have your weld. This side right here and this side here mate up. And if you think like, hey, why is that such a good fit? If you look at it, you can see a recess machined here into the surface. And then if we look at this side, what do you think it has? That's right, the opposite of a recess which is a raised lip. Obviously then when you put these two together they mate up, they create a solid seal, and you're home free, provided you have three inch diameter stuff to work with. So um, that's what I'll be doing is just kind of trying to sort this stuff out. It's nothing fancy, it's far from ideal. Hopefully it doesn't come back and bite me because again the best way to handle this is get everything mocked up on the truck, fit it, tighten it down loosely make sure everything's kind of lining up with your mounts where you need to be for your cat the rest of your exhaust crossover is in line and checks out it's just sort of the time constraints we're under trying to get this done a little quicker so that's never a good position to be in that's where we find ourselves so this one in addition to one of the mid primaries not being welded up we've got this just sort of out of round it's not perfectly concentric if you will and even though this is generously bushed out for three inch, it's still not enough to clear this. So again, what's weird, you know, feeling around, there's typically like a little burr that would stop it from sliding over and just puts everything off kilter. Totally not the case here. This is like really well done. It's just the pipe, whether it was in freight or handling or what, is just kind of, you know, stretched or ovaled out just enough to be a problem. So I'll uh, get back to this, see if we can't straighten her out and get it back in check. All right, so no real clue where we left off. I have had pretty much no free time here as of late. Uh, since we left off, I do know that I got some parts in. Uh, we no longer have the stainless V-bands. We've got steel V-bands. And the issue is these are not interlocking, which sucks. I thought they were. Um, is that the buzz kill? I got a whole bunch of O2 bungs to pick from, if <laughs> anyone cares. I uh, bought some plugs down there. We got some taps to clean some threads out. That little lap band clamp was put in place. I had the audacious hope that by squeezing it in place as tight as I possibly could, properly stripping threads, we could somehow collapse the pipe a little bit. Well, that didn't work. Uh, the night those came in, I got home really late, threw that thing on there, and just thought, maybe I'll wake up, and next time I come out to the shop, it'll magically be sunk in, and that didn't happen. So... Put it back on again, uh, flip it, I rotate it, I have hopes and dreams, and sometimes maybe we'll get lucky, but uh, busted out the body hammer dollies, and uh, I was having a heck of a time on the thing, so basically like this one, you know, we come in, even though these don't interlock, it would essentially be a deal where we would just slip fit, right? And we would slide over, as you can see, there's like zero resistance, we can go as far up as we want to. Um, so that's awesome. You know, you just flush weld that, you're home free. This one, it just doesn't do it. It's like everything butts against it. These swaged pieces, you know, where it would just slide over. This slides over every single connection in this kit, except for, of course, 
our passenger collector. So what I'm trying to do is keep it round, right? I want to maintain concentricity. That's a word now because I just spoke it. But uh, I bust it out. This is kind of like my little go-to when I'm trying not to like screw stuff up totally. Lightweight, I think it's 300 gram card. Wasn't really getting the results I wanted. It came in, I got the 500 gram one. I uh, would use the Ghidorah, but I just constantly keep the plastic cover on that because it's so handy. And then I wouldn't get anywhere and I thought, well, hey, maybe if I just get like some body hammers. That wasn't happening. The real reason I grabbed that kit, I was hoping there was a round dolly that would fit in. And the weird thing is, this isn't a situation where I need to, you know, typically freight damage or, you know, 95% of applications, it's going to be a deal where like this pipe is collapsed. You know, it's like crunched in a little bit, whether it's blatantly obvious, like waves in the ocean or just subtle, subtle stuff. And you would be tapping it out or you would be expanding it, you know, like swaging with one of those piece of trash tools that never works from any brand, right? This is the opposite. This is a freak deal where I'm like needing to crush it down just you know not crush it but just get it back to three inches it's probably just you know thousands over and it's creating lots of problems the hammer wasn't happening for me uh spent a ton of time last night worked up a sweat didn't get out here till like nine came in the house until around 11 and <laughs> basically had nothing to show for it so uh, what I have done, I posted on YouTube and Instagram, I've gotten no feedback, at least as of right now. Uh, it's a tool from Lyle, I have never seen it. What I was trying to do is find, I figured there was some crush sleeve, you know, with like a collet that would go inside and just, you know, perform the operation. <laughs> If there is, I don't know about it. Maybe it's like with hydraulic equipment, you know, and that's why I'm not finding it. Um, I would have called it something more technical, but it seems like with a pipe re-rounder, you can find it for small tubing and plastic PVC type pipes, which will do both applications. You know, if this is crushed, you can s smash it in there and it'll bring it back out to size. And then the claim with this piece I ordered, it's kind of like a megaphone. And, you know, most people are going to take the cone end and drive it in and then just bang, bang, bang and try to get it out to where they want it. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm actually going to flip it around and it claims that it will bring this back to round. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. We're just going to have to get it and see. Uh, I was actually ordering more stuff from some, but it was constantly having it come out of Ohio. That's not good when there's a location in Arlington, so it was a pack of rib nuts that was like constantly tweaking my order is what I determined, so I just said, screw it. <laughs> and, uh, got it coming out of Arlington. I hope to have that here maybe tomorrow, probably Wednesday, and I'm going to try it. We'll make a video on that tool standalone because, again, it exists, and I can't find anyone that's done anything with it, so... Uh, more than likely it won't work and what I will wind up having to do is just crush that down either with pliers or just smashing the snot out of it with a hammer. The big issue when you smash this with a hammer, let's just say from the top down, um, you'll bring this into spec but then the impact does things, right? So if you had a dial indicator and we had you know this chucked up and we were able to spin it, which is really hard to do with headers, if you're unaware, uh, short of cutting the primaries off, then we could really work this thing nicely. But uh, that creates more problems that we don't want to get into. So what we're going to try is that tool, and uh, we're just going to see if it'll work for us. The point of contention, if I take you over here, and this is really, really classical stuff here. So everywhere seems to be round until you get right about here to here. And if you're thinking like, oh, that's the top, that's easy. Well, keep in mind, I'm trying to minimize the blows because again, if I just crush this down, I could probably get the V-band over it, but then you're going to inevitably push the pipe out elsewhere. Just a little bit, right? And uh, since I'm wanting to weld a V-band on the end, I'm trying to keep this in good shape because I need this thing to be as, you know, specced so we can have our crossover connect properly, clear cross members, clear, you know, driveline components, everything. It's a situation where if you do a little, little thoughts process, you know, you've got your O2 bung here, which if I take our little plug out, which comes out beautifully now that I chase these terrible threads. The area that's impacted basically lines up with the outside weld here and the outside weld here. So my thoughts are, 
this warped when they welded the O2 bung. They probably just slap it on there, do like a continuous pass, you know, don't bother to take their time with it. It is MIGged, so that's most likely the guy just, you know, if it's not robotic, I'm sure that, you know, the guy on the line is just going around it in one pass, maybe stopped once to reposition. And I believe that is probably what warped that, and it's causing me all of this trouble. So, that's sort of the update. We're going to get the tool in, and uh, again, I'll make a standalone on that, just because at some point in time, someone's going to have a stupid situation like this, and they're going to have the exact same question. Hey, this Lyle 32000 that I found, does it actually work? And they won't know the answer, but maybe the video uh, that we'll make will tell them. So... Best case scenario, it works. It was money well spent. I've got it in the arsenal. We can use it for situations like these, or uh, the more common one to just kind of bush the pipe out a little bit back to round. So that's sort of my stopping point here. <laughs> and, uh, I think what I'm going to do now, in order to clean this up, uh, I think I need to take like two to three inches off for the guy that's going to TIG it for me. So what we're going to do is uh, open something that I've just had sitting in the floor for a really long time. And I uh, can't lie, I'm kind of excited about it. So that's the update for now. Nothing exciting, but important information for some of you. And uh, we're going to go <laughs> make ourselves a little tool haul. All right, it's late. I'm tired. It's hot. I'm just going to quickly try to walk you through this for the Ram Revival stuff. This is the driver's side collector. We've got Nick kind of cleaned up decently. Coming down though, I've spent the majority of the time here where the primary wasn't molded by pay setter. And you can kind of see the gap right there. So I've cleaned up the tube as best I can. Again, it's super hard to clean someone else's well just because of the porous nature. Uh, Tig guy said he might have to hit the outside. I hope if he does, it's just concealed where it is because the bolt holes on a small block Mopar are super tight to the tube already so if we can stay in that region that'll be fine i've prepped that out pretty well for him uh passenger side again is sitting over there haven't put a final polish on it but that is that <laughs> we uh, we opened up the belt sander uh the the surface belt sander right you know with the sanding disc we opened up the 3 8 belt sander we've done a lot of a lot of new tools here to kind of help us and yet the old-fashioned way that i usually do things is still what works the uh Steel bristle brush gets you get the paints off pretty quick. And I come in with a brass one, kind of puts a nice sheen to it. Uh, the most helpful thing that I got from Harbor Freight for this round is actually that little 11 piece surface conditioning set. That's the one inch version. And that little guy right there in my drill, that thing was like super handy to get down inside that primary. It was like the perfect fit. <laughs> Anything bigger couldn't do much with. I know a lot of you'll be like, hey, use. Use a little sanding on a rotary deal. Well, tried it. The problem is that weld is kind of your high point, and then you like duck down, if you will, to the primary tube. And that, even though it's the smallest one I've got, it just doesn't give you enough, like, you'd almost need like a pliable foam for that to be functional. That's actually a pretty good idea now that I think about it. But anyway, that's that. It's uh, like I said, I'm just dripping sweat out here. So probably ought to get in. It also sounds like the wind has picked up again. So there could be a storm coming. But uh, yeah, that's it for the Ram Revival on this part. I don't know if we're going to combine parts. I don't know if they'll be standalone. It'll just kind of depend on the length, I guess. So uh, next things you'll be seeing is, I guess, these getting tigged, uh, fitted with V-bands, me mocking up the exhaust, uh, the exhaust coming back from something cool happening to it, and uh, then hopefully eventually the truck running. So I'm not exactly sure what order any of that will come out in or happen or materialize, but that's sort of the roadmap. So... Uh, stay tuned for that, but the bottom line, we've gotten this prepped, we've got that round, and we've got both collectors prepped for V-Band, so I'm going to call that good for now. Again, this could very well be a longer video. Uh, this could be the end of it. I don't really know. It's just going to depend, so on that note, have yourself a great rest of the week. Thank you for sticking with me here on the Ram Revival as we get new parts that were super delayed that have to be reworked and open up whole entire cans of worms, but uh, hey... It is what it is. We've got our air hose reel held up by some uh, <laughs> uh, vice grips. And yeah, everything is, everything's just great out here. So anyway, thanks again for watching. And I will catch you back here for more from the Ram Revival.